On today's episode of Amanda Felix Eats, we'll be revisiting a place we featured in one of our very first YouTube videos. You guys seem to really love this spot. To be honest, I just wanted to go for this. Look at this. Come on, Foodie Ohana. Very simple, very guilty pleasure. And also, we have a really special dessert segment coming right up. Let's go. Let's go. What's going on, Foodie Ohana? Welcome back to the channel. And for today's episode, Hawaiian snow because it is raining. So we actually came up with a really interesting concept for today's video because we are revisiting our very first video. Where are you going? Is it that way? No, it's straight. Oh, it's that way. Anyway, has we're, it been that long? We're revisiting our very first video here on YouTube that we've ever published. We're gonna be going back to the very first place where this all started and we're taking you guys along with us. And honestly, today we're planning on having a very nice and lovely picnic here in Manoa. But as you guys can see, it is pouring rain and it's so dark. You know it's bad when the wipers are on level two. It's gonna be a tricky one. We're gonna have to figure out where to go and eat within this rainy weather. We found a park that is not wet, but we had to drive a little bit farther. We ended up coming all the way to Kapiolani Park. Not even raining, it's, the ground's not even wet. We escaped the rain. Here we're gonna do our little set up our table. But it is however windy. Look at my hair. <laughs> it's windy, we're in the sun. We have some overcast now, so perfect timing. Let's get into it. Where do we go today, Amanda? So today we went to Feast by John Matsubara. It is located in Manoa. It was actually our very first video that we've ever put out there on the internet for YouTube. So don't go looking for it, guys. It's very cringe. Very just, cringe. Just watch this video. <laughs> and we've been wanting to come back here just so that we can revisit it without the nerves that we had the very first time. Well, we didn't get the same things we did last time. We wanted to try something different. To be honest, I just wanted to go for this. Look at this. Come on, Furio Ohana. When's the last time you've seen a cheesesteak this good? I felt it too. I held it too. And it was really, really heavy and hefty. We're excited. We haven't eaten yet. I swear, this thing is like the size of a newborn. This is their famous, renowned cheesesteaks. Feast 808 is primarily known for their lobster rolls, which we did in our very first YouTube video ever. They actually won best lobster roll mm. for last year. They're currently featuring this special, which is a Philly cheesesteak, or they call it their cheesesteak roll, but they also give you the option to add double meat. So why not? As I mentioned always on Amanda Felix Eats, if there's an option, do it. Do yourself a favor, get the upgrade because that's what it's there for. This hefty sandwich, however, does come with a hefty price tag, I will say. So we are very, very hoping that it's good. Yeah, we did a little bit of splurging on today's video, but we got an awesome dessert segment as well. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. You don't want to miss that segment. All right, let's get into the sandwich. Might want to have the Cokes ready. Give Amanda a little baby piece because you know I'm going to be finishing off most of this. Ooh. But guys, very simple, over the griddle top ribeye with some caramelized onions and of course, cheddar cheese. And like I mentioned, I added uh, double the meat. Cheers. Double the pleasure. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Oh, man. Whoa. Mmm. Felix always talks about greasy lipstick and I felt that instantly. Mm. Oh, man. I love the cheese. The hint of that creamy cheese. It did take us a while to get here and to set up. So the bread is a bit soggy. A little on the soggy side. But it does retain its structure. Really nicely soaked up the sauces as well. The bread, nothing to write home about. Just a simple hoagie. The beef is where it's at. Cheese, American, cause you gotta have American cheese with your cheese steak. It's very ironic cause it's like a fancy expensive sandwich, 
but the flavors are very simple. Mm -hmm. Very in your face beef, cheese, bread. Very simple, very guilty pleasure. The fries, I do not like. It's I never too did. Soggy. I think since our first time visiting, the fries was something I did not like. Very thin, yeah. very soggy. And this is not the soggy fries that I typically like. It has like a stale texture. Like it's supposed to be crispy, but it's soggy. But if you can, come here for the sandwich. How much is this upscale cheesesteak sandwich, you ask, Felix? This, with the option of double the meat, was $29. Oh my God. $29, folks. So you're going to be paying quite the price tag for this one. But man, if you're having that meaty craving and you need that satisfaction, this is where it's at. I do really like the cheese and the meaty element to it. There is some saltiness as well. I just really like the flavor of the cheese and the meat together. And you can tell that they use like a high quality meat as well. It's not gamey. It's pretty tender. And there is a hint of that caramelized onion flavor as well. It does retain its moistness. Meat is very moist. It's almost like a cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I like it so much. It's like an elevated cheeseburger. I'm pretty sure if you ate this fresh, you could taste the individual you know, sliced up beef, but because we let it sit and it's all like stuck together now, it's almost like a burger. These are like a shoestring kind of fries. I'm eating it just to like offset the saltiness of the burger. It would be perfect if these were like really good fries, but that Philly cheese is a home run for sure. And what caught my eye this time that I wanted to try was this catch of the day. It has like a ginger scallion kind of sauce on top. There's a side little salad and some white rice. The fish itself, I'm not gonna lie, the portion is a little bit on the smaller side. When you look from the top, it looks like the fish is really thick, but there's actually a bed of bok choy on the bottom that makes it look like it's thicker than it really is. But guys, I will say I can appreciate a really well-cooked fish. So let's see how it is. <laughs> and of course, they do come with house salad. They wouldn't let me sub for the Mac salad. So of course I had to get on the side. This bad boy is gonna run you back $4. That better be good, y'all. Let's try the fish first. The fish is a white looking fish. I believe it was mahi mahi today. And then there is some ginger scallion sauce on the top, some kind of sauce on the bottom. So their sauce is a salmon butter sauce. I guess it's like a wine reduced butter sauce. Mm. Oh man, is that flavorful though? That, that butter sauce and that ginger scallion, oh, it hits nicely. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna dip some of that white rice in that butter sauce. Oh yeah, the butter sauce has a nice creamy and sweetness to it. That ginger scallion, nice bite of the spices of ginger and scallion, mm -hmm. goes really well together. It reminds me of like a elevated Chinese dish. And the fish itself is cooked really well. It's not tough, it's very tender. It's not dried out, it's very moist. It has a nice texture to it as well. And I like that it comes with bok choy because bok choy is always a nice addition to Chinese style cooked fish. When you eat the sauce with the rice, there's a bit of a sweet element to it. Like just the sauce itself, not the fish, but the sauce has a sweet element. I will say I really like the flavors on this dish. You get sweet, spices, buttery creaminess. The only thing I wish was there was more fish. I'll let Amanda try the salad while I try the crab potato salad. They call it their crab mac salad, but with a K. So I'm guessing this is imitation crab. I'll let you know, Fudio Hana, if this is worth the $4. Cheers. Hmm. I can't tell if this is like imitation crab and they're trying to make it taste more like that crab flavor it tastes like they tried really hard to make it taste like crab but it's too hard where you can taste the artificialness it's really creamy i like the potato to it it's a potato crab salad there's no mac in here it's more on the sweet side too let me try your salad i do like the salad the dressing is kind of like an onion dressing which is not bad it has a nice sweet and creamy element to it actually if yeah if i could sub the salad for that i would really i don't know i just don't like uh i don't know okay let me try Ooh. Mm. Why is there celery in here? Is that what it is? But mm -hmm. but do you know what I'm talking about when I was talking about the crab flavor? Do you think it's real crab meat in there or not? Imitation for sure. I just wish there was no celery, but the celery flavor is not really strong. It's just you get the crunch. So I guess I'm okay with it. Same thing with the sandwich. Like $29, I feel like it's not bad pricing for all that meat. I wish it was like, you know, I, I want to open a plate and be like, oh, like my eyes are like, but is it because me and you split it? Maybe. Honestly, I think that cheesesteak is worth it. Yeah, I agree. I think because we split it, so when I was holding it, it felt small. But every time I take a bite back into this, I'm like, yep. 
it is worth it. <laughs> so when we got there, there was like tables and stuff, but there was no one in there. So we didn't know if we could eat in there or not. And also it was raining and you could, and the doors were open. So you could hear all the cars whizzing by with the wet ground. So that's why we decided not to eat in. But maybe if you guys eat in, it might be better. And as mentioned, this is a revisit. We did this video, our very first YouTube video, actually. Can you guys believe it's been, has it hasn't been two years yet? Almost two Almost, years. Yeah. Almost two years since we last ate here. And I will say, if I recall correctly, we did like the lobster roll. But if you guys are curious about their lobster rolls that made them famous, check out our video. Or actually, Wait, we, we told them not to. <laughs> we did do a review on their lobster roll. Yeah, guys, make sure you guys stay tuned for the dessert segment. It's something that we had to get specially delivered to us. So definitely make sure you stay tuned for that and you're not gonna wanna miss it, trust me. Before we continue on today's segment, We'd like to give some special thanks and mahalos to those of you who donated to the channel. The first person we want to give a big shout out to is Sharon A. Thank you so much for your suggestion of Nana Aikatsu. And we've actually been there before. We filmed when they were previously in the Ohana Hale Marketplace. So let us know down in the comments if anyone wants to see an updated review. Let us know. And thank you so much for your donation. And the next person we want to give special mahalo to is Mark R. Thank you so much for your donation, for your contribution. It really helps out the channel. Thank you so much, Mark. The next person is Lori D. Thank you so much, Lori, for your continued support, your continued encouragement, your kind words, and happy belated birthday to a Gemini sister. Ooh, happy belated <laughs> birthday. Mahalo, Lori. And the next person we want to give a big shout out to is Janet Yu. Thank you so much for the birthday wishes and the donation. It really means a lot to us, and we put good use for my birthday. <laughs> Thank you again, Janet. Oh, you don't have your glasses on. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, I don't. I was wondering why everything looked blurry. <laughs> and the next couple we want to give mahalos to is Alan and Brandy. Thank you so much for your donation, your contribution, mahalos. And thank you so much for watching us. And the next person we want to give a big shout out to is Julie A. Thank you so much for the birthday messages and thank you so much for continuing to support us. And now we know... Oh, oh. No, Lou! Sorry, guys. And now we know the name behind the username. So thank you, Julie. Lucy says mahalo too. And the next couple we want to say thanks to is Robert and Susan T. Thank you so much. I know your trip to Hawaii is coming up right around the corner in October. I bet you guys are super excited and we're so glad our videos could help you out on where to eat and where to find awesome grinds. Mahalo so much again. And the next person we want to give a big thank you to is Mike S. Thank you so much for your contribution and your birthday wishes to me. It really means so much to me that a lot of you guys were there for my birthday live stream and also watching my birthday video at Orchids. If you haven't caught that, make sure you check it out. But thank you so much for celebrating my birthday with me. And thank you so much, Judy and Yuji, for the birthday wishes as well. You guys are so awesome. And I want to also say we really hope that Yuji is recovering from his surgery and we're sending you lots of love and aloha. And the next awesome individual, Ed E, thank you so much again for your donation. And you're mentioning that you didn't know how we put away all that food and where does it go? Honestly, we don't know either. We just eat a lot of chicken breasts during the weekday. So maybe that helps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you again, Ed. And the next couple, Maria and Steve C. Thank you so much for your continued support. It means so much to us and we're super glad that you also enjoy gomate. And we wanna say thank you so much for the cart also. We have been using it so much and it was so thoughtful of you guys to even think of getting us the cart. So thank you so much. Thank you. Of course, mahalo to each and every one of you who have been watching and supporting us this whole entire time. And we hope to continue growing our food ohana. So once again, big mahalos to each and every one of you. And Let's get back to our dessert segment. If you want to know what we got for dessert, we got special cookies from the Maui Cookie Lady. It was a special delivery from her. Mahalo so much for sending us these cookies. They were gifted to us and we're super excited to be trying them out. We have tried them once before when we were in Maui last time, which was in 2019, which is a long time ago. And we did enjoy the cookies. So we're super excited to try some of her new and old flavors. And the best part about these cookies Foodie Ohana is you can try them for yourselves. So if any of these cookies look awesome, which they do, do yourself a favor, order one of these bad gals right now. It's available on the website. Mm -hmm. We'll link everything down below. It's the MauiCookieLady.com. If you forget, we'll link it in the description as usual. I would say the most famous is called The Half Baked. It is actually The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's favorite cookie. 
and there's literally Reese's, Oreos, and Snickers, and chocolate, all kinds of candy bars in there. It's literally the guilty pleasure cookie. Cookies in itself are already a guilty pleasure, and this is loaded with all the other guilty goodies, all in one neat package. <laughs> Or should I say big package? Yeah, These things are huge. Yeah. We broke this one in half for a picture. If you don't follow us on Instagram, go follow us. I'll have it linked over here. But yeah, I don't think we can even eat oh, half of this cookie. This thing is massive. Massive. And Reese's is actually one of our favorite candy bars or candies in general. All right. And cheers. Mmm. Oh, man. Whoa, I love that recess. When you were a kid, did you ever run up and down the candy aisle and wonder which candy you should get? Because mom and dad says you only can choose one. Well, now you don't have to. You can just get this cookie and have all your favorite candy in one bite. Signature peanut butter cups, and then the Oreo cookie and cream shines through, and then pretzel. What is the pretzel thing? It's a Snickers. I will say though, you gotta have a coffee with this. It's pretty, pretty sweet. It's more on the crumbly cookie side, not really like chewy or crispy. It's more crumbly. We did hear that if you put this in the oven or if you microwave it to warm it up, it actually becomes quite moist. It becomes more delectable, so do it. We've done it in the past before, Foodie Ohana is just we're in the element. We can't really be doing that. We were originally gonna film this at home to show you guys what it looked like baked, but you know, gotta love the scenery. But yeah, I can attest to these being awesome after they have been rebaked in the oven, preheated for a little bit. Like, look how much cookie there is left. This yeah. thing is massive. There's no way we can like go through all of these if we ate more than half. So what's the next one? This one was the Anuhea one. Oh, let's try that. We didn't try that one yet. I swear, I'm like, all the crumbs off the table, you can get full off eating just the crumbs. So this one is Anuhea's Up Country Breeze. The main things are gonna be like white chocolate, Maui macadamia nuts, ooh, marshmallow, white chocolate truffle, ali'i kula lavender. Is it hollow? Why is it hollow on the inside? That's kind of funny. Oh, because it's supposed to be a truffle on the inside? Oh, like a chocolate truffle? Because last time we did this with crumble cookies, we were on a sugar rush for the rest of the night. Half of the half. What is that? Quarter. We're gonna quarter it. I do see a lot of macadamia nuts, white chocolate truffle. It does kind of smell like lavender, which is gonna Ooh, be very interesting. It. Ooh, smells like lavender. Oh. Woo! Woo hoo! That lavender. Not gonna lie, it tastes like I swallowed a perfume bottle. It tastes like I'm eating a cookie while running up and down the lavender fields. This one is really strong. Maybe a little too strong. I'm guessing Anuhea as in the Hawaiian artist. Oh, this is her cookie. Yeah, I don't get the marshmallow. The lavender is very strong. And then you get the white chocolate macadamia nut flavor. That's my favorite part of the cookie. Yeah. The white chocolate with macadamia nut. Oh, I mean, no. if you guys like lavender, this will be right up your yeah. floral alley. But I do like the creaminess of that white truffle, that white mm -hmm. truffle chocolate. I will say this one was a lot less crumbly as well. Next up, we got the peanuts, pretzels, and beer. So this one, it looks like it was made from Ale Works, that which won the Hawaii Craft Beer Gold Medal. Collaboration with that. Like there's peanut butter, brown sugar, chocolate, peanuts, beer, caramel, pretzel, Mahalo Ale Works English Brown Beer. What is that? Interesting. Vanilla Highlander Grog? What is a Highlander Grog, you ask? No idea. No idea, but we're about to find out. It's very moist, this one. It's not just crumbled peanuts. Ooh. There's literally whole nuts in here. It has brown sugar notes, caramel notes. It smells really good. Cheers. Mmm. Whoa. Ooh. Oh, it really tastes like beer. Does it? To me, I get a really strong, like, brown sugar taste. It tastes almost like Sam Adams' Oktoberfest. <laughs> <laughs> like a festive beer. Like, you can really taste the beer in this. And it's pretty ingenious because there's the salty pretzels topping. Because when you drink beer, you eat salty snacks, right? Like mm -hmm. pretzels. Let's see how this works. I taste that flavor and I think that's what it is. I think that Highlander Grog is that flavor I'm tasting. Kind of has like a mapley syrup taste as well. It tastes as if you dipped a brown sugar, chocolate covered cookie into your beer. That's actually the one I'm favoring right now. Yeah, I was gonna say this one might be my favorite one right now. Mm -hmm. It has a nice hint of like salty and sweet element as well. This one is called the Butter Rum Triple Chunker. Whoa. Looks like it's more brown sugar based with some white chocolate, dark chocolate, Bavarian cream. Try to just smell this and tell me what, what's the first thing you smell. I don't know. 
rum. Is that rum? Actually, to be honest, it smells kind of like a banana bread. I think it's the Bavarian cream that has that smell. Oh. It smells oh. very sweet. It kind of smells like back in the day. Do you guys remember if you're all millennials, like when you went to Icings or Claire's, they would have like those body glitter things. That's what it kind of smells like. It looks very crumbly from first glance. This should be called the Maui crumble. Whoa, it does taste like banana bread. This just tastes like a really awesome banana bread. Oh, oh there's no so, banana. It's so smooth and moist on the inside. Oh, this is my favorite one. It has a, a more salty taste to it. I taste like the hints of salt in there. The one thing though is I wish there was nuts in here. Overall, if you guys like more crumbly cookies, not super chewy kind of cookies, this is definitely the cookie for you. And you can definitely be eating these cookies for a couple of days. Like it's hard to finish one in one sitting. And guys, the Maui cookie lady, it's a very awesome backstory. She started off making cookies as just a fundraiser to show support for the ICU nurses of the Maui Memorial Hospital who cared for her late father that stayed there. And next thing you know, they became a hit and now she's making her own cookies. Like what an awesome backstory. Oh, and she uses only natural ingredients, guys. Preservative free, whole ingredients, unbleached, unbromated flour, raw sugar, local ingredients. So guys, Support local. I mean, if you guys like thick and crumbly cookies with very interesting flavor combinations, do yourselves a favor, check out her website. If you guys do ever visit the Maui Cookie Lady, make sure you let her know that Amanda and Felix sent you guys. That would really make our day. And her day as well. Mm -hmm. There's so many different flavors. Just make sure you guys check out the description down below. As always, we leave all the links to all the places we visit down in the description and also some videos that you may want to watch after this video. All right, Foodie Ohana, that about wraps up today's episode of Upscale Takeout Food and Awesome Thick Crumbly Cookies. Thank you guys so much for coming along on today's foodie adventure. We really hope you enjoyed it. And do yourselves a favor. If you are going to feast, check out that cheesesteak though. It's mm -hmm. worth the $29. <laughs> Double meat also. Double the meat, double the pleasure. And we hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you guys did, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. It helps our videos be pushed to new audiences. And also, if you have not already, hit that subscribe button down below. It's easy, it's free. You can help us out by joining our Foodie Ohana and join us on all of our foodie adventures. Yeah, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, until the next one, Foodie Ohana, take it easy. Eat your cheese steaks, explore your inner foodie. Peace out. Bye guys. Visiting one of the places that we fit. Feast by Ron Matsubara. It was Ron. Our... That's what did I say? You said Ron. <laughs> Who's Ron? So we got some really oh my god. Look at my Yeah. To be honest, I just wanted to go. Oh. Wow. How much is this? How much? Wait, what? And the fish itself is cooked really well. It's not, oh my God, look at my hair. No, Snickers is peanuts. No, but it's Snickers in my hair. Yes, I get that, but what is the pretzels from? There's no pretzel. There is, I taste something pretzely. Fly, flies. It's on my forehead. The flies on my forehead. Wait, but in the ingredients, there's no rum. They were a hit, you know, and she, yeah, cookie, cookie, cookie. I mean, birdie, birdie, birdie. <laughs> no problem. You, you smell the food, yo. Yeah, I think so.